So I came across this interesting 775 engineering sample CPU like two weeks ago in Japan. Uh, the price was still somewhat okay, but it's definitely quite expensive for a random 775 CPU like this. The funny thing was that the CPU was advertised as an engineering sample version of the Q9550 CPU. I couldn't find the exact model back then when I was buying the CPU, but now when I received it, I found out that the CPU is an engineering sample version of the Q8400. The Q spec is QLQN. Now Q8400 isn't the most interesting 775 CPU for me. It's uh, pretty similar to Q9550 and Q9650, I think. So uh, uh, those quad-core York fields, they aren't easy to overclock at all on the X48 platform. Usually they just stop FSP-wise right after 500. I don't know if the uh, story is exactly the same with the Q8X model, so Q8400 for example, but I would assume that it doesn't want to go very high on the FSP on the X48 platform. Uh, when I was checking out that the clock frequencies etc, the stock frequency of the CPU should be somewhere around 2.6 GHz, and when I was looking at the results on hardwarebot.org, the clock difference between ambient cooling and LN2 cooling was actually quite small. So I could find like air and water cooled results at 4.1 and 4.2 GHz and the record score frequencies were usually between like 4.4 and 4.7 GHz. I think it was somewhere around like 4.5 for SuperPi 32M etc. And the validation was done at 4.7. So it's actually quite possible that we could even output a very competitive result even on air cooling on X48 platform for a SuperPi 32M for example, but don't know. So uh, in the end, I think it's still quite cool to own this rare engineering sample version of the Q8400. I just checked it and it works. So we could briefly test it together on the Rampage Extreme motherboard and see where does it max out on water cooling. So uh, like FSP and the actual core frequency. So yeah, anyways, so I'll just install the CPU on my worst Rampage Extreme and I'll meet you again inside the BIOS of the motherboard. So I just landed it inside the BIOS, so I'll try to load my bidding profile for... So this is uh, 4 GHz, so 500 times 8. Maybe it's possible, don't know. So uh, it's definitely a large uh, raise from the stock frequency of 2.66 gigahertz, so it's like 1.4 gigahertz increase almost. But we can still try it, so 1.35 volts, 1.35 VTT, and I'm running uh, channel A at the moment, so I need to raise the north bridge voltage to 1.63. So, yeah, so let's see what happens. Does it even post, or does it blue screen when I try to boot the operating system? So 1.35 volts on the vehicle, blue screened when I tried to boot into Windows XP and now I rose the vehicle voltage to 1.4 volts and I managed to boot 4 gigahertz. So I think the CPU could be actually quite good. So considering that the top results are done at 4.5 ish, so not even close to 5 gigahertz, this CPU could actually be quite good. So let's try again. So the stock performance was 17 point something seconds in W Prime 32. Let's try to run W Prime 32 again, but with our real time and everything. So now the temperatures are actually going up as we have enough load. So I don't know what's the bug on 775 CPUs so that the temperatures don't actually uh, uh, read correctly if they are too cold or too cool, whatever. So. Uh, 9.39 seconds. So uh, if you uh, calculate the percentage gain, it's pretty massive. So uh, on 775, you can actually gain a lot from manual overclocking. So 4 gigahertz, pretty cool. And the best test from these old tests for binning 775 CPUs is PyFast. But it's not very fast because I'm only running uh, uh, single channel, so memory does have an impact on the performance quite a lot. Especially on these older platforms, as uh, the slower the test is, the more impact the memory will have, obviously. So, 24.22, and I think the top result is 
21.4 so it's only like three seconds away it's quite funny if you ask me but the main question is that how far above the 500 FSP can we go on this CPU model as we are running x48 and that was the hardest thing about these quad core York fields like Q9550 etc so let's try I think this would be okay 4050 Does it crash already in PyFast? Yep, it did hang. So it's not a very good sign if you ask me. So I don't know what this uh, is. Did we hit the FSP limit already? Very hard to say. Okay, so some slow progress at the moment. So uh, now I managed to post and boot 505 FSP straight away. So that's close to 4.05 gigahertz with two of the cores disabled. The CPU does like a little bit lower CPU PLL voltage and now it's at 1.45 volts ish. But yeah, this will be very hard. So uh, this will happen on LN2 as well. So uh, it will be very hard to go uh, like beyond this on LN2. So uh, like reaching 550 FSP and so on. So around 24 seconds. So still like two and a half seconds away from the top scores. And now if we try to set, let's say, like 510, what happens? Okay. But this will definitely just f crash s straight away when I try to run any tests. So almost 4.1 and we hang at the desktop. So yeah, pretty hard thing if you ask me. And okay, that's the new rank 3 score in the SuperPy 32M test with the Core 2 Quad Q8400. I beat the previous rank 3 score by like one and a half second, uh, but funny, my frequency was only at like 4040 uh, megahertz, and the previous rank 3 score and the current rank 4 score by that Canadian guy is done at 4.216 gigahertz. But that one was also made on the Rambage Extreme motherboard and the X48 platform. I don't know how he was able to run the FSB at well over 520 megahertz and even above 525 megahertz because I just cannot go any above or any higher than 510 to 515. Uh, I really tried everything. I tried all of the uh, clock skews and even GTL. I managed to pass PyFast once at 515 with only one stick of memory, but of course that wasn't like 100% stable. But yeah, so. Uh, this is something I need to uh, investigate on later, but I think this CPU is actually pretty good. So uh, this CPU could be very worthwhile to test on LN2, at least on P45. The only P45 motherboard I have at the moment is uh, the one from DFI, and I'm not sure if it's the best one. Usually the best P45 motherboards have been uh, from Gigabyte like the EP45T Extreme and I, and I think the other one was like UD3R uh, or something like this. But yeah, so uh, rank 3 and the rank 1 score in uh, SuperPy 32M with the Q8400 is at 10 minutes 24.5 seconds at 4.5 gigahertz ish on P45. So I think I would need a frequency of let's say like 5.4.2 uh, gigahertz or between 4.2 and 4. Free with similar memories to be able to uh, challenge the rank one score. So uh, yeah, pretty awesome I think. And I managed to get the uh, performance level to five as, as well for this run. I had some issues at the start getting performance level to five, but I think it was because of the CPU. But yeah, so uh, this is pretty much it. So uh, if some of you who are watching my videos have any like comments or ideas about getting these core, uh, core 2 quad CPUs, the York fields, higher on the FSP on X48 platform and well mainly Rampage Extreme motherboard, then I'm really interested to hear some of those ideas and comments. So feel free to drop some below if you have any. And yeah, so uh, thank you for tuning in for this uh, Q8400 engineering sample overclocking video and hearing about my thoughts about getting these uh, Yorkfield locked CPUs high on the X48 platform 
give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching one of our videos once again, and I'll see you on the next one.